Guys, this is the pre-intro to the intro. What you're looking at is a pretty much deserted, abandoned John Deere utility vehicle. This is going to come later on in the video. You're going to want to watch this part because we be it became an unbelievable experience. You have to watch the video to find out why. Now let's cut to the main intro. Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new adventure. Coming to you today from a, another Google Maps find. Been finding quite a few areas lately, and this one looks promising. Got a building here. Behind me it says Pole Line Hardware. So that will hopefully uh, help give us a little bit of information as to what took place here. This is actually situated in a former industrial complex. Where we are here, it's all flat level land, poured concrete, for either floors or foundations of buildings. And this is the only remaining structure that's left. For whatever reason, they did not tear this down or demolish it. It's situated along a former rail line, which is now a rail trail. So it's publicly accessible. It's not posted. And we're able to walk right in with the open door policy behind me. And of course, Mr. RJ Seven Day Productions is joining me for today's adventure. This is somewhat in his neck of the woods, not exactly, but he is familiar, more familiar with this area than I am, and he was able to come scout it out for me and ensure that, yes, there is a building here worth checking out. So I got a flashlight with me. I am prepared. He's got one, too. And we're going to go inside and see what we discover. If we do learn anything about this place, obviously it will be shared throughout the video. Otherwise, I ask you to pay close attention to what you see. If there's anything that you see that you can educate me on, I love to learn new stuff and learn about different types of construction, equipment, anything that we're looking at. It helps me to produce better videos for you guys. So without wasting more time, let's go inside and check it out together. Follow RJ! So right outside we have a roll-up garage door that has been sealed up with some wood. And somebody made their own entryway busting through the cinder block, cinder block walls. First impressions, it actually looks better than I was expecting. Of course we're going to come across graffiti throughout the whole place. People have been here, tagging it up. There's a ladder that goes to nowhere. And of course, he can't help himself but the climate. <laughs> I'm at the top. There's nothing here. I'm fine. So in the next room here, there is some greenery growing inside of it. And it looks like the place has been kind of scalped. So this has the traditional feel to a regular warehouse type factory. I'm guessing one time, you know, this had maybe a production line, manufacturing equipment, and now it is a big empty shell. It has a, what do I want to say? This has like a uh, post-apocalyptic feel to it. You know, it looks like a place that people would come to for shelter or for protection. Similar that you would see on movies and TV shows, but otherwise, aside from that, not a whole lot to see, but we are going to go through the whole building. There's an upper level, which is probably an office area. That's how they're usually situated. There's another little back building in the back. And uh, I'll see what else we find. So not too bad so far.
So the one thing I'm noticing is that with all the holes in the roof, it's actually creating a mess inside of here. The floor is covered in dirt and debris and it's actually muddy and soft. So it, the floor, even though it's a concrete floor, it's layered with a good inch of material in some spots and you're stepping on it, squishing, it's getting stuck to your shoes. It's almost like a uh, type of putty. So it's not the most ideal conditions unless you have good footwear. But that is, sometimes you have to come to expect that, you know, it's not gonna be ideal. But the holes through here makes a pretty cool effect. It's all like little pinholes. I wonder if they're like gunshots too. So we just came from under there. There's a little room there. It just has a water main in it. We'll check the upstairs a little bit later. We're gonna go to the far back portion now. And although it is bright enough to see in here, it will shine for you guys just to kind of help with the image. But right here I'm walking, it's like a lake bed. It's so much material here. I mean, you could see the imprint. It's just sopping wet. So it's not ideal. Oh, geez, I almost went down there. Not ideal for me to be wearing sneakers, but that's just the way it goes. Got another door here, roll up garage door. It does smell, people often ask what it smells like. It does smell damp, musty, but oh, here's something probably had um, maybe electrical connections here or this was maybe a piece of equipment, not really sure. Live hard, die fast. Should say live free, die hard. Yeah, I'm gonna be coming out of here caked in mud. So this room here still has some light fixtures. You can even see the, the ballasts are still there. I usually have to replace those for my one job. And of course, it's all smashed fluorescent lighting. Maybe a break room, maybe not. There's a chair, this could have been an office maybe. Could be supply room. That's where a fire extinguisher would have been. Window door, which I believe is, yeah, that's screwed shut. As we lift up through the window here, we should be able to see out there. It's a good sized building. It makes you wonder why they didn't raise it. I honestly can't even do much b-roll here because anywhere you place the camera it's either wet or muddy so it's going to be pretty much primarily filmed like this me and you walking around i know it's not going to be the most exciting video but it is always cool to discover and find something on google maps and then be able to come in person and document it there's a utility knife orange one i used to have that at work and it's brighter here, you can see. It's like a natural skylight, but it's not intentional. There's piles of garbage here. You can see my footprints is just nasty to walk on. And right here we got the greenhouse section. Got some plants and ferns and moss and other kinds of green, greenery stuff growing in. And something that doesn't belong here is a duffel bag. Can only imagine what that was used for. But I gotta say, I actually do like that the plants are growing here. It gives it a different feel and look to it. it kind of brightens it up a little bit. 
and the wall got a mushroom behind it. Well, here's an insulator. Good size one, too. And these, uh, without a doubt, held uh, electrical equipment. Probably big breakers or something. And usually these places are well known for photo shoots. There's a smoke canister there. And a suitcase. Somebody left their luggage here. It's not the airport. So I know you guys probably want to see the inside of that room and the upstairs portion. So we'll check that out next. You can see all the fallen insulation on the ground. The duct work. RJ thinks it was probably a break room or a locker room. When we get closer, we'll see a bench upside down. Actually, a couple benches that you typically see in break rooms or locker rooms. And then I believe the upstairs is okay to go up to. It is metal and concrete. So before we go upstairs, let's check underneath here. It's the darkest of the areas. It has uh, what's left of a little bit of some walls with sheetrock and this may have been like a little kitchen i believe there's the kitchen counter and sink some drawers yeah so this must have been a type of break room so we come in the next room behind it some tile oh yeah there's tile floor Furnace. This is probably the only heated portion of the building. There's a uh, wash tub there, wash sink, usually for like mop buckets and stuff. Shower stalls, maybe? Maybe showers. I'm walking in all ceramic tile. Federal regulations require no food be eaten in restrooms. Darn it. Can't sneak your five dollar foot long in here. Fresh out of teepee. The bathrooms are surprisingly more ornate. You know, they do have tile walls, tile floor, probably just for easy cleanup, I'm guessing. And here's the remnants of the benches that RJ spotted. They are flipped over. There's a couple of them here, and like I said, very reminiscent of Locker rooms, break rooms. So up on the second floor here, we do uh, have a lot more growth, natural growth of vegetation and stuff like that. Completely exposed roof. And uh, yeah, partitions you can see, dividers that are now knocked down. There's actually a little walking path here between the, the weeds and stuff. So this was, it looks like finished at one time. It's all tile right here. So it's more like just uh, non-working quarters. And as you can see, you know, walls on both sides. So this was enclosed. Most likely offices, I would imagine. Maybe not. That looks like um, a wash sink. Yeah, so we did see... Bathrooms downstairs, which may have been for a particular office, but this looks like more general bathrooms up here, now that I'm looking at it. Tile everywhere, that wash sink, and these are about the general size. Yep, there is the pipes for the toilet right there. 
So we can't confirm 100% we are in the bathrooms up here. These may have been sinks that are here. Plumbing overhead, which mm -hmm. would have been coming down to most likely sinks here, as RJ stated. Even though it's nothing significant, it's nice to be able to piece it together to see what you're looking at. Commercial sink, it's got the step ring on it, so you press on that with your foot to dispense the water. It would have been a, almost like a tub on top, and it would have came out like a shower head, 360 around, and you'd wash your hands. Usually they have a soap dispenser on top of it. They're very common at older warehouses, factories. I've had them at places I've worked at too. But the upper portion is gone. Maybe I'll throw in a picture right now showing you what that would look like, but 100% that's what that is. I've also seen these in garages and dealerships. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at Look at all these Scrabble pieces. Scrabble. Put some letters on them. You got Scrabble blocks. It's just remnants of the tile floor. And here it is completely intact. They may even have windows here too, you know, to look down upon the main working area. There's a keepsake. If you want, I will put a price tag on this and you guys could maybe uh, put it in auction. Highest bidder gets this keepsake tile. <laughs> Darn it. Okay. So we saw pretty much everything that there is to see here for the inside of the building. I'm gonna go around the outside now. Not a whole lot to see, but at least wanna give you some outside perspectives and views of it. And then we'll uh, wrap up the video from there, so. I guess I'll do a little transition here and see you outside. And just like that, movie magic, we're outside. So as we can see, nature is starting to re Is that a phone booth? There's steps going upstairs too. That looks like a phone booth. Ah. Oh. Don't be that lucky. It's in the concrete too. So those steps are going up to where we just wore upstairs. So RJ's gonna go get some uh, more footage for his video. And while he's doing that, we're gonna, ooh, just spotted something here. We're gonna check out more of the outside. Looks like it may be a water main here. Not really sure what that is. Hmm. Something to do with water. It has like the fire hydrant top to it. I'm guessing something with water. It looks like there was a fire here too. Some charred wood. Oh, lantern flies. Those are not good. You're not supposed to be here. You're in the wrong country. And this tree is actually covered in them. I don't want to take any home with me. So like most places, nature is reclaiming it. This has been empty, vacant, abandoned. Well over 10 years from my understanding. And like I said, everywhere that we're walking was or wore buildings. As far as I could see, it's pretty much flat level ground, concrete. Even right here, you can see another raised concrete pad. So there's all different types of different buildings here. I encourage you to watch his video for a specific reason because right now he's actually doing a specific transition technique and he kind of got the idea from me 
turned it into his own. And it's a pretty good idea. And he's doing the second portion of it now. So if you want to see how that transition comes out, make sure to watch his video. A little bit further away now and came upon the parking lot. You can faintly see the yellow stripes for the parking spaces. So this was the parking area. The rail line was on the other side of the building, which we'll show a little bit of once we get over there. But back here is parking. And again, there's more concrete pads and just flat level ground for a good distance, which would have been multiple buildings. If I'm not mistaken, it looks like this was almost like a makeshift skate park, skate ramp. What do you guys think? It looks like it. It's like a perfect slope. Tried to make our way around the fence and found uh, someone's little hobo hideout here. Got a tent or tarp and what's left of a chair. So we found our break in the fence that we were looking for instead of having to climb over. And we found dumping ground. So there's some couches here, uh, a wagon. And what else is up here? No. There's a John Deere Gator side by side sitting right there. Looks like it's been there a while. The flat tire up against the tree looks flat. What in the heck? This is a little bit. This is bizarre. Look at we got a brand new chain here, a little bridge and a friggin John Deere Gator side by side. Most certainly this was probably stolen. Otherwise, if someone broke down here, they would have came back to fix it. Wow. This is a first for me. Yeah. We got it stuck here. They're probably driving at night maybe drunk or something Probably. and ran into the trees actually the wheels gone from here this was a yeah. six wheel drive they're right there yeah they're right here that one's mangled this tire's off the rim on this side yep the ignition's gone somebody probably jumped yeah. it i can't believe it holy crap i thought there was someone back here i thought this was just yeah. parked here So, first time ever on JP Video's channel, a legit abandoned utility vehicle just sitting here, kind of in the woods. It's still got gas in it. This is still salvageable too. I mean, you could yeah. take this and get it back in working condition. I don't know how you get it out of here because it's, here. yeah, you'd have to come with a winch or something. See if you can make sure you can see me. <laughs> Let's kick this into high gear. <laughs> Oh, I know why it's stuck here. I just still got gas in it. They didn't put it in all-wheel drive. Yeah. Then they drove into a tree. <laughs> Tailgate's still on it, still intact. If we lift that bed up, the motor should be underneath it. Is there a, a lift? Well, like I said, it's still got gas in it. It doesn't smell that old either. I'd say probably a couple months. There's a oil or water right here. Oh, jeez. 
a quarter tank of gas in it there. <laughs> it's tilted, so it's probably a half tank. Is that choke? I think that's choke, yeah. Yeah, she's got between yeah, quarter and half tank of gas. The radiator. Yeah, there's the water right there. The motor is underneath the dump bed, but can't get it to lift up or unlock. But yeah, they were uh, trying to get this out. They must have hit pretty good. It's crazy that they took one from the technician. Yeah, here it is right here. It's got the hour meter. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Holy crap, this is like a unbelievable. The sucker still runs. Oh, the lights go on? Yeah, the lights are on. Oh my god. That's why we couldn't lift the bed. Holy crap! Unbelievable. Watch your dump bed. Now, let's put this out there. Padlock. This is a, not the key for this. He has a, that's a, that's a padlock. padlock key. He said, let's just, for the heck of it, try it. Obviously they, they messed with the ignition. And it's damaged, so. it's damaged. So any almost any key that fits, it <laughs> starts right up. No choke. No choke. The battery's still good. Huh. This just made for a whole another different type of video. <laughs> so there's a couple things I want to mention about this because this is completely not what we come to find here. This was unknown. This is going to be here. We do think just based on the location here and the condition of it it's most likely stolen probably kids stole it went joyriding with it and you can see they did get stuck with it there's actually ruts here where they were spinning the tires i don't know if they didn't know how to engage the all-wheel drive but they probably came down here came too fast you know maybe even hit the tree or something like that i don't know how they got in this position though it's unbelievable that it's sitting here like this and for a strange reason, the two wheels are removed because this is normally a six wheel drive vehicle. But it's only been here, I'd say a week or two at the most. The gas is still good. The battery's still charged and it started up with just a generic key. So we don't know, you know, what we're going to do. Um, I don't know if there's a VIN number on it somewhere too, but I don't want to speculate and assume things, but you know, this is just our, our inclination as to what we're thinking, but unbelievable. Like this is completely such a surprise. Not only that we found it, but that it actually starts up and nowhere to lie. I mean, you guys saw it in the footage, we were walking up towards the opening of the fence, which is behind me. And I saw it sitting here and I'm like taking a double look. I thought somebody parked it here is maybe doing something here in the woods. And then we saw the wheels busted and it's slammed up against the tree. I, my theory is that if someone did own it and this was their vehicle that they put here, they wouldn't have left it here. They would have came back with either a truck or help or something because it's still a running vehicle. They could get it out of here. I think kids or maybe they were drunk or something were joyriding. Maybe at nighttime probably didn't realize it was a ditch here with trees and just slammed it yeah i mean we really don't know i just i just can't get over it like it just yeah that's definitely first we found i found you know pedal bikes i found abandoned cars found a lot of stuff in the woods never have I come across an all-terrain side-by-side vehicle one that runs at that it just 
I'm almost like in a state of shock. I can't believe it. I want to take it home. Figure out how to get <laughs> that is something else, though. All right, guys, we're going to leave it here. We're going to make our way back to the building, finish off this video, and then at the end, we're going to share our thoughts on this whole situation. So we'll meet you on the other side of the building. So here is a look from the front side. This fence here is the old fence. It's not complete. As you saw at the beginning of the video, just up past the tree line, it is open. So we were able to walk right through, but not much left of it. And as I was talking about, the rail line is right here. This paved section is the former rail line. So that was what used to service this and other buildings here in this industrial complex. But we're gonna find an area to kind of take a breather and to give our final thoughts on this, what turned out to be a really surprising location. So where to begin? This uh, is gonna be an outro I never thought I'd be doing. Complete unexpected surprise at this location today. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna probably ramble a little bit, but I wanna share what's going through my head and RJ's gonna do the same. This location, again, Google Maps find, came here knowing after he scouted out, not a whole lot to see, basically an empty warehouse. And although it was cool to see it, it was a little bit, you know, underwhelming. It was just an empty building, but I thought it was worth documenting just to let you know, hey, we found something on Google Maps. This is what it looks like in person. Came here to document it. But, just our own curiosity, trying to find more footage to film, we started exploring the grounds. We went behind the building, back behind the parking spots, ultimately trying to find an opening in the fence to get around to the other side without having to backtrack to where we are now, because the building's behind us. And as we're making our way back, we found the, you know, the dump site there with garbage and couches and stuff. And just by peering off in the distance, I saw something black, a big black mass in the woods. And instantly recognized it was a side-by-side -side utility vehicle and my first thought was that someone just parked it there was doing something in the woods i don't know what they would have been doing but i thought for sure someone was back there and as soon as we get closer we saw the tires busted out and two yeah two two of them off busted up against the tree so not only was i completely thrilled and surprised and kind of dumbfounded about finding that even more shockingly though, the thing runs. I could not believe it. I was like, I feel like a little schoolboy. I'm like, oh my God. Uh, I just, you know, just by chance of luck, he's got, you know, keys for locks and tractors and stuff like that. He's like, hey, let me just, for the fun of it. And yeah, I didn't expect that at all. He's messing at with all. it. And the key turned a little bit and I heard the fuel pump come on, like the hum. Next thing you know, it cranks it, start it right up. It's got an electric utility dump bed on it. And, um, Everything works. I mean, obviously the ignition has been messed with because it takes pretty much any key that will fit in it right now. And they spray painted it over it. The original green color is underneath the bed in the wheel wells. They spray painted it for whatever reason. Our initial thoughts is that two theories. Number one, maybe some rich spoiled kid had that and was driving back here with his buddies, maybe drunk or something like that and just bashed it and just left it. Oh, don't know what happened to it, mom. Buy me a new one. Or it could have been stolen and could have been just bashed and left there and waiting for someone to find it like we did. I don't think it's been there more than a week or two, just based on the fact that it's not overgrown. It starts up, it's got good gas in it. The battery's still charged, but just to play it safe, as we were making our way out to the rail trail, there was a like a park official coming by in a pickup truck with uh, flashing lights. I guess they do checkups on the, the rail line just to make sure everything's in, in order. We actually stopped them to notify them of it. So listen, we don't know the story behind it. We just stumbled upon it by just walking through the woods and this is where it's at, you know, and from there it's up to him to, there they are, they're coming to get it. <laughs> it's up to them from, to handle it from there on out, but we just wanted to at least do our part to let them know it's back there. And, you know, maybe it'll be there for months to come, who knows? Maybe they don't care about it. It's really an unexpected, unexplainable situation honestly between the both of us we would love to take it and to say hey you know we got a free side by side obviously morally it's not the right thing to do but most likely it's not going to be recovered by the owner it's probably going to be someone who's going to find it and take it for their own but with that said though 
this turned out to be a much better location because of that. Like I said, I found abandoned items before in the woods, and with that being a side-by-side -side utility vehicle, specifically a John Deere Gator, never in a million years would I say, hey, I'm gonna find one of these one of these days. But it just goes to show, if you explore in the woods or explore out of the boundaries from a location that you're at, you never know what you're gonna find. It's always these unexpected surprises that kind of make a normal situation into, wow, I can't believe this is actually happening. And more importantly, we had cameras, we were able to share it with you guys. So you heard our excitement as we encountered it, as we found it, and our shock that it started up. But as a whole, the location I think was worth documenting. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Google Maps is always a gamble because the locations that you find on Google Maps are a couple years old, those images. But thankfully, this is down here in his area. He was able to come scout it out for me and said, yeah, the building's here. It's open, accessible, not posted, and the rest is history. But I'm going to turn over to him, and he'll share his thoughts. Yeah, drawing a blank. <laughs> Where to start? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely uh, not what we expected. Um, the building, like he said, I came and scouted it out ahead of time a couple weeks ago, and I already knew what to expect with that. So that was definitely... You know, already, already knew what was going on with that. But you know, surround going around the property and seeing the other stuff out back there and the fence, and then coming across that gator, it was just like, wow. <laughs> like if I would have done that when I scouted it out, I would have known if it was there then. But I didn't go back there, so I had no clue that that was even there. But or if it was even there back then, that that was actually a month ago, probably a month ago, mm -hmm. good month ago, at least. So, um, but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely worth it. You know, documenting like he said and showing what what's here. And there is another spot up here that we might check out on the way out too. That's just some you know like foundation type ruins. Uh, definitely check into that. Um, I'm also going to try to look on Pen Pilot to see old aerial photographs of this. So if I find it. We'll, uh, I'll share it with him and I'm sure he'll look too and uh, I'll take a look or add it in my video as well so uh, all in all great day more awesome memories with JP <laughs> getting the ride in the silver bullet finally yes. so he's enjoying that he loves that turbo sound <laughs> so it's nice to have that pep there when you need it so but yeah that's it that's it for me and what he was mentioning too about getting old photos uh if we are able to we definitely will show them if we didn't already but where we're sitting right now we're actually inside of another building i'm sitting on a concrete pad here there's a brick line corner right here so we're right next to where a building would have been Safety post right there. yeah there, this was a huge complex at one time and obviously it was serviced by rail and for one reason or another actually what you're sitting on right now is the base of this telephone yeah pole. there's a telephone pole that you guys are on the base of it somebody cut it and it's laying right there but uh, whatever took place here was significant and whatever one reason or another you know things just fall out of business due to the economy or whatever else ha does happen but it's just surprising the building's still there but if you guys happen to recognize it know anything about it obviously share the comments down below again we only explored it because it was open not posted and pretty fairly easy to get to i mean it's literally feet away from the rail line so it's not like it's hidden or anything like that it just takes a little bit of effort to get to it from where you park and where you walk to get here Jay, stop right there. Time out. I had to stop your outro because you forgot to mention that you're going to be returning to this location in either the spring or summer of next year because running underneath the entire property are some pretty long and intriguing tunnel culverts. As you'll see in the pictures and the photos here, they're not very tall, but they are really dark. There's two sets of them, flowing water, and we're going to return with the proper footwear, lighting, and camera gear to explore them to see how far they go and where they come out at. So you will see this place again in the future. Now back to you, finish that outro. Um, but morally, I think we did the right thing. I do feel good that we notified someone that way, you know, whatever the story is with it, hopefully by them know knowing about it, being here, they'll be able to notify the proper authorities and maybe bring it back to its rightful owner or maybe the owner is like, I don't want it. You know, give it, give it to someone, <laughs> I don't know, but I know people on other channels have found things in the woods and in, in water and stuff like that, but for my channel and for his, it's a complete first time experience finding something not only like that, 
but that is still relatively salvageable. It could be fixed up, some new tires on it, and knowing that it already runs, I mean, it's just amazing that someone would just leave it there. Whether you're drunk or not, I would want to come back for it. But with that said, if you did enjoy today's video, all I ask you to do is to give it a thumbs up. Obviously down below in the description, you'll find a bunch of links to obviously his video and channel, my Facebook page if you want to follow me where I do share pictures, photos, and videos. I don't always make it to my YouTube channel. And some merchandise uh, items are available too, new stickers and some new t-shirt designs. You can check that out as well. Everything down below in the description. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for joining us today. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Go incriminate ourselves and play with stolen objects. <laughs> yeah, my prints are all over it now. <laughs> Come on, Mother Nature, we need rain. That way? Okay. <laughs>so here we are at the end of the video and this outro is one that i never thought i'd be doing turned out to be such a surprising unexpected surprise jesus <laughs> that rock distracted me